Now, uh, do you ever feel that life has dealt you a bad hand? Perhaps it's made you feel embittered, angry or sad. Um, Our guest this morning has more reason than most for feeling that way. He lost his sight at 19 and he's been through more than the average person. But despite this, he's demonstrated determination as he's overcome adversity with humour and an infectious and enthusiastic love of life which has captivated audiences around the country. He is John Flanner, MBE, and he joins me in the studio now. Good morning to you, John. Good morning, John. Thank you so much for coming in this morning. You've come all the way down from Birmingham. Yes, an early start uh, with the milkman, but uh, we're here and uh, fresh as days, as you might say. Well, you, you certainly look, look looking fresh. Listen, you, you met the Queen a couple of weeks ago. You're now a, a, an MBE. What what was that like? What what did you get the MB for? MBE well, we, for? well, we didn't actually see the Queen. She was out and a bit thoughtless, but never mind. Oh, we no. saw Princess Anne, and it was uh, it was a really memorable day. Fantastic time uh, that my wife, uh, children, and friends were able to join us for. And I was awarded the MBE for services to equality and diversity. Mm -hmm. I work within HMRC, and I've worked there for many years, um, initially as an audio typist, which is what I was trained to do when I went blind. Uh, More recently, I've been doing tax work. I've been working on uh, rebates, which has been a nice job to do. But also, um, I've had the opportunity over the last 11 years to go and make uh, equality and diversity presentations at team meetings. And uh, the amazing thing is, I've been sharing much of my Christian testimony uh, of about how I went blind, uh, of the many fears that came into my life, of some of the funny things that have happened to me and my most embarrassing moments, of which have been many, and also how my Christian faith has really helped me overcome a lot of the obstacles. And I've shared these things in team meetings. And the amazing thing is we've had people in tears and laughter in equal measure. Atmosphere in the office has been transformed. Uh, Where morale has been low, it's been raised. Mm -hmm. And God has opened doors for me to go to other offices across the civil service right across the country. And after 11 years... um, it would appear that someone has nominated me for an award. And right. uh, as I say, I got the MBE for that. So you're still working um, for the civil service then, are you? Yeah. Yes, for a few more weeks. I'm 67 now. Oh, my goodness. Uh, but uh, they're paying me to leave next month. Uh, there's a voluntary exit scheme because right. the job I do is being digitalised. So no need for human beings anymore. So I'm being paid to leave. So with regard to that, I, I feel that I've touched so many lives uh, in the workplace that my passion is to go out to other offices and uh, workplaces across the UK to inspire people to enjoy life, make the most of everyday life, not just weekends, but to enjoy their work every day. And that is my passion. as a person with no sight and, and doing typing, how do you check your work? Is, is Are there some facilities on the computer that allow you to hear whether you've written the right thing? Yeah, there's a, I use some screen reading software called JAWS. Okay. Sounds a bit ferocious. It's nothing to do with the movie, <laughs> but it, it stands for Job Access with Speech. Right. And JAWS reads to me, and it's it's opened up a whole new world so, for So when it, when it reads out a, a typo, what, what will it read out? Because some words must be almost unpronounceable. Yeah, well, we said you through the spell check of course and actually okay. I must I must tell you John that when I first started using these screen readers probably 15 years ago they were very basic and they couldn't pronounce certain words right. and I used to work in an office where I had to type lots of medical reports for people on long term sick oh with and long I, long medical words yes yeah, actually <laughs> and I wrote about this lady and it said when I read it, when it read back to me it said she'd been to see physio the rapist <laughs> oh dear But at least it taught me how to spell physiotherapist. (laughs) Now, John, you went you went blind at nineteen. What a what an age! Um, I imagine that must have been terribly traumatic. Yeah, it was. Um, A gradual deterioration, was it? Well, yeah. I mean, the beginning was. I I can remember uh, two things. I remember having a bang on the head playing football. I banged my head on a goalpost which left me with blurred vision for a, for just a short while in my left eye. Right. And then another time I was out again playing football and the, the, the rain began to really pour down and the rain seemed to be stuck to my eyes and I was wiping my eyes to clear the raindrops out of my, out of my eyes, but I couldn't clear my eyesight and it was, it was blurred. And over a period of six months, I went totally blind. Gosh. And um, it transpired um, some years later, but just about three years later, 
uh, that my brother went blind when he was 17 and then my sister went blind when she was 23, I think it was. Good grief. So they discovered that it was a hereditary condition yeah. coming down through my mum and um, and one of my nephews has gone blind quite recently. What, but it's what? a disease that can only be passed on through the mother. And what's what's the name of it? It's called Leber's Optic Atrophy. Okay, so I'm not I've not heard of that at all before. Okay, um, and and there's there's apparently no cure. No cure whatsoever at the moment. No, and mm. very little research. Mm. And uh, people are trying to raise awareness of this disease because there are quite a number of people across the UK with this. But uh, at the moment, as far as I know, there's not much research into the disease. Be- because you had your side all that time, 19 years, John. Are you able to to visualise things still? Yes, certainly. I mean. I mean, I, I still look 19, don't I? Um, yeah, OK. Well, um, 17. Yeah, I, I, I remember people who were around at the time, like the Beatles, and I still remember Paul McCartney, what he looked like then, and yeah. people like Cliff Richard, and uh, and I, I used to love the carry-on films. So, right. uh, you know, so I remember when I watch a carry-on film now, I can still, in my mind's eye, still see, see all the see, characters. See, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is where you get your sense of humour from, isn't it, John? Well, I think it's, it's as corny as that, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> So what did you have to learn to do in a nutshell? I mean, having gone blind at 19, you were unprepared for that. Your your whole life must have changed. Were you working at the time? I was. Uh, I was in a job I hated, but I wouldn't have gone blind to get out of it. It wasn't that bad. But um, I... Yeah, I I didn't have much confidence anyway as a teenager. I was very nervous. I had lots of fears in my life, and that's what I write about in my book, the many fears I had before going blind. And then then after going blind, I had many more fears. Mm, Uh, Of course. um, But it it was a really scary time, and my big passion in life was football, and uh, I just lived for football. It was the one thing I thought I was any good at because my, my teacher picked me for the school team. Right. And so from that moment on, I thought, yeah, I'm the best. You know, I'm good at this, and I want to do this for a job one day. Right. And uh, because that's the power. When someone chooses you for something, you believe in that person because they believe in you. And that teacher, I would have run through a brick wall for him. And although he was the English teacher and I didn't like English, because he chose me for the team, I wanted to do my best for him. And I think that's how it is. When someone selects you in life, someone believes in you, it, it, it creates a loyalty. Yeah. And uh, th- this is perhaps um, continued with you and, and, and uh, enabled you to see that you can be an encourager of other people. That's right, yeah. I mean, encouragement is... Uh, I, I make a big thing of this because encouragement is very powerful. i got a friend who, when she sends an email, she said to me, what does E stand for in email? I said, electronic. She said, no, it doesn't. It stands for encouragement. And, <laughs> and she says, whenever she sends an email, she always reads it through and says, does this contain elements of encouragement before I press mm. the send button? Very good. And uh, encouragement is, is a powerful thing. Why not start your day with Inspirational Breakfast, Monday to Fridays from 7am, only on Premier Christian Radio, where faith comes to life.